we heed a certain call when the world must come together as one there are people dying oh when it's time to lend a hand to life the greatest gift of all we can't go on pretending day by Change. We all a part of God's great big family, and the truth, you know, love is all we need.
it clear that laws such as this one on the books of Florida that grant people license to use lethal force against unarmed individuals must be reexamined. And finally, let me assure you that whether it is through lawsuits protecting the right to vote, challenging unequal educational opportunity, challenging the overuse of incarceration that uses criminal justice system to lock up young black men, or addressing police misconduct, the American Civil Liberties Union is devoted to tearing down all barriers to a more racially just society. Because we are committed to racial justice, civil rights, and equality for everyone, the ACLU is standing here today, and we will be here tomorrow. All right. What happened? That is not right. All right. I promise you, if a black man has shot a white man, I'm not trying to be racist to anybody, but he will already be in jail right now. This is not right what is happening in our community. They don't teach this in schools. The only reason I know about this is because my parents know, and I'm at Brown Barge Middle School, where I'm in American Tapestry, where they are teaching us about racism, bias racism, and all types of racism. All right. All right. I promise you, if everybody here put on a hoodie and it was nighttime and we walked down the street, we, everybody would be, everybody here would be suspicious. That's right. That's right. That, he did not have the right to shoot him. No. I listened to the news report and on the phone, the people told him, do not follow him. What gives them the right, right. to follow him? If he had stayed in that this, car, none of wouldn't this have would have never happened if he had Stay never cool. followed him. That's right. What happened was not right, and I promise you, this should never happen again. That's right. All right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's gonna happen to you. That's right. Every every boy, every every African American male here. I promise you, this could affect any of us. And it can right, be any baby. of us if we do not do something about this.
wonderful. But we must hear our sons. We must hear from our daughters. I want to know how has this and how is this affecting them? This morning in chapel, I asked, what is the latest news? And one of my uh, little second graders says, oh, Miss Lewis, did you hear what happened? I said, what happened? He says that boy was killed in Sanford. Second grader. All right. Now, I can imagine what the even 15 and 16 and 17 year old who really understand how they feel. So I'm asking you to come on over to Zion Hope Primitive Baptist Church, 201 West Leonard Street. We're going to hear from our children. I want them to know I know they're going to get the message. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Tim Simmons was at some kind of rally. Uh -huh. Then I went on over to uh, uh, the uh, police department, that's Chip, yeah, went over yeah. there and Mr. Morgan, he was at the same, I guess, rally. And uh, when I walked in there, I told him, wait a minute, you got to hear me. I say, I need to know what, when a child is stopped, I want to know what are they to do. Well, I want you to know they gave me some statue, and I told them I'm not interested in your statue. Oh, okay. You are a police officer. I want to be able to tell my children right. something, and this community, boys and girls, right. on Thursday. Right. So I want you to know right. they're dragging the feet, okay. and they're telling me, oh, you read the law. No, that's not my job. I'm an educator. Okay. All right. Because you want, I want to hear from them. Yes. I ask for you to pray yes. because this has really bothered me. Oh, yes. I'm concerned about our children. Yes. I do not want our officer to stop. I remember Victor Steen. That's right. Yes. Do you remember Victor Steen? Yes. He was crazy. Yes. Okay. I don't want another African American child not to know their rights. That's right. I want them to know their rights when that officer stops. I want them to know what to do. Today, nobody was able to tell me what to do. Man, Warriors, and I'm not going to take up much of your time. Um, a lot of people that came up here and said a lot of good things, and I'm not going to repeat it. You don't have to go down to Sanford, Florida to see injustice. And just as mad as y'all are about a white man killing a black man, you should be just as angry as a black man killing a black man. And I mean that. And I mean that. This is seven or eight murders in the Scambia County. What are we doing? What are we doing? And where's Mayor Hayward? Okay. Here's off the back of that milk cart. And as you look around, you see black and white. This is not a black problem. It's not a white problem. It's not a civil rights problem. It's a human rights problem.
one more lap around that wall, and we're going to let those bricks fall down. Regardless of names, labels, or titles, we're all here for one purpose and one purpose only. I don't expect for what I have to say for everybody to agree. Come on. But if you say you walk with Jesus and you love Jesus, everybody didn't agree with him. So I'm going to say what some of you have in your heart that you say at your dinner table, what you say with each other, but won't say in public. Yes, the brother is right. It's a human problem, but it seems to be more of our human problem than anybody else. Let's make it clear. Our dear brother in Sanford, Florida, was murdered. And it's been a month ago, and the man is still not arrested. He has the ability to leave the country if he wants to. And go to a country where there's no extradition. But the question is asked, why did God allow it? See, nobody's asking that. Why did God allow this? See, he's tired of his people begging everybody else for justice and unity when the justice and unity is within ourselves. And with God no Justice is not Mr. Zimmerman being arrested. Justice is Mr. Zimmerman being arrested, tried, Absolutely right. This black on black crime got to stop. But you cannot expect for it to stop in a failed educational system in which we live in today. Your children and my children must learn a comprehensive knowledge of self. And when they learn about self, they really learn who God is, where God is, and you will understand why some of the children of God, children of the most high God, when you know that God looks like you and looks like me, then you will have a better reaction from the little brother, a better reaction from the little sister. But these are the truths that we have to talk and think about each other. Brother Trayvon Martin, this world would never benefit from the talent that was in that brother. He would never grow up to be a father. He would never grow up to be a husband. That's right. He would never grow up to give to this world this what God put in him to give. Right. But the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said to us that this brother's life is not in vain. That's That's right. Right. That God is using it to bring about our unity and it will transcend racial lines. But don't get happy just because a few people that don't look like you and me are joining in the fight. This is a fight we got to be about ourselves. Stop worrying about being called a reverse racist. In order for something to be in reverse, it had to be going forward at first. Stop worrying about what somebody else had to think when you know in your heart how you feel. Now let me say in my clothes to the press that's here. I know you ain't gonna put this on TV. I already know that. And let me say this. The brother is not inciting a ride. All right. But I read somewhere that you will reap what you sow. Or are we just going to meet on the ball 
box, talk a feel good a minute, and do nothing else about it. Our babies are waiting on us to do something, family. So I ask you, please, to all the men that are in the audience, please become brothers. Become men. Because until we protect our community, in our most valuable commodity, which is the black woman, which is the strongest, powerful thing on the face of the earth. But I'm more proud to be a father. All right. And I'm going to tell you right now 
that those parents' hopes and dreams were crushed yes. when Trayvon Martin was murdered. Amen. But the men of Phi Beta, Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, we plan to be in Tallahassee and shoot for repeal of this law. We know it is wrong. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. That's right, I'm a Yankee, but I learned something. I'm not just a Yankee, I'm a darn Yankee because I moved down here and stayed. And I ain't going nowhere. And the brothers of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated aren't going anywhere either. We're going to stay here and watch this law be repealed, and I'm going to tell you, young children, you can fight, you can be angry, but you channel that anger towards your education. Your education... And what you are feeling right now, that fear and that confusion, your, your anger, if you channel it towards your education, you can change this world. It's not too late. Our hope is within you. You are the ones that are going to carry the torch and live out the dreams that Trayvon Martin couldn't do. God bless you all. And just good night. Also, I went to jail for using these things. I, uh, I'm going to give the closing prayer, but prior to that, I do want, I do want this crowd to know that as far as first-hand knowledge of black kids being killed in this city, nobody who stands around here, nobody who lives in this area knows more about that than H.K. Matthews. I know when a kid was killed in a grocery store over on Powerpark Street and he only got on with an ice pick three days after he was killed. So this is a kind of stuff that we are up against. Trayvon Martin was somebody's son. As a matter of fact, he is all of our sons. And those of us who stand around here tonight need not go home and rest easily, Amen. but go home and recognize the fact that had it not been Trayvon Martin and had it been another black kid, the same circumstances would have existed. Now, what I'm saying to us tonight, had Trayvon Martin been white, I think we all would still be taking the same stance. Because nobody has the right to take something that they can't give back. Let us bow our heads for the closing prayer. Eternal God, we thank you for allowing us together in this hallowed spot. A spot that has been ordained by you, by the presence of the stature of one of the greatest leaders who ever walked the face of this earth, except for Jesus the Christ. And that being Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. We thank you for the opportunity that we've had to come and to share with all of these in the quest for justice and freedom and equality. And we pray, God, that somehow or another amongst us as a people, as an African-American people, that you will erase that envious spirit that we have one against the other. Bless us to be able to come together and not be jealous and envious of each other about the accomplishments that anybody might make. We are not here to, to, to create any kind of media blitz, but we are here to let the world know again that we are sick and tired of being sick and tired. And so we ask now that you dismiss us from here, but never from your presence. These blessings we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you all for being here. It lets us know that you care and that you're concerned. And at this time, I will relinquish the microphone and give it over to Reverend Hugh King to close out with a song. You are free to leave. <laughs> Say it loud. I know that song. <laughs> Keep on walking, keep on talking, watching on.